Now, at this node right here, we had 280 milliamps coming in, 25 milliamps coming in. How much goes out? 305 milliamps. Now, you can confirm this by looking at your total load current. How much was your total load current? 305. They should match, right? Because this is the current that's going to feed those. So from here, you add 30 milliamps going into load 3. How much was going left down there? 275, right? Going up into this branch to load 2, we took away another 75 milliamps. And that left us with 200 milliamps that we needed for load 1. Okay, so far so good. Back over here to R3. Can we determine what the voltage drop of R3 is? Yes, we're given it, aren't we? 37.5 volts to this node. From here to here, we're dropping 37.5 volts. Can we find the resistor value for R3 now? What is it? 1.12 K ohms. 37.5 volts divided by 33.55 milliamps gives us what? 1.12 K ohms. 1.12 K ohms is the resistor value for R3. Can we find the voltage drop of R4? Yes. Yes. What is it? 30 volts. Actually, I wrote that in correctly. Okay, that's 30 volts for VR4. Can I find the resistor value for R4? What is it? 30 volts divided by 58.55 milliamps. What do you get? 512 ohms. What is it? 512. 512 ohms. Okay. How about the voltage drop for R5? 20 volts, but it says 50 here. You've got to take out 30, because 30 went across R4, right? All right, so the R5, 20 volts. Can we find the resistive value for R5? What is it? 126 ohms. 126 ohms. Okay, back over to the bleeder resistor, R3. We had 33.55 milliamps going into this node. Is that the only current going to that node? No. We also had 30 milliamps coming from load 3. Well, that 30 milliamps from load 3 and 33.55 milliamps across R3 marry up at that node and go across R2, do they not? And how much is that? Okay, take that across R2, can we find the voltage drop for R2? 45 volts. Okay, again, you would take, yeah, that's incorrect, we would take 50 volts and subtract the voltage that got dropped across R3. Because there's 50 volts up to this point minus whatever was dropped on R3, which would be 12.5 volts. Okay. Can we find the resistance value of R2? 12.5 volts divided by 63.55 milliamps. What does that give us? 23.6. 23.6. Volts for resistance? No. Ohms. Okay, going up into this node, I had 63.55 milliamps. That combines with that 75 milliamps coming from load two.
giving me what going across to R1? Okay, so what is it? 196.7. Okay, uh, current going across R1. These two currents here combined, 63.55 to 75 milliamps. What do we get? That goes across R1. Do I know the voltage drop of R1? Yes. What's VR1? 50 volts. 50 volts, again. Up to this point, I had 37.5 volts plus 12.5 volts to that node. Coming across load 1, I had 100 volts. This adds to 50 volts. i got to take 100 volts, subtract 50 volts, whatever's left is across R1. 50 volts. Can I find the resistance value for R1? What do we get? Okay, and last but not least, the current going into this node, I had 200 milliamps coming from load 1, 138.55 milliamps coming across R1, they meet up at that node combined to give me 338.55 milliamps. Any questions on the complex voltage divider? Okay.